So in this question, we have a ball P, which has a mass of 0 0.16, moving east at a speed of 10 meters per second. Okay, so we can see that collides head on with another ball, uh, which is Q, moving west. Okay, so this is before, and then, and then, and then after they're going to collide. So it says after the collision, ball P moves west. Okay, so ball P crashes into ball Q, and then, and then ball P after the collision ends up bouncing backwards. Okay, so guys, when I, when I, what I want you to see is that when you see a question like this where you've got two objects that are crashing into each other or something like that, I want you to remember uh, conservation of linear momentum. Okay, that's important. Um, and also, if they start talking about, they might even start talking about time Okay, so then what we have is we've got mass, velocity, time, and they might even start talking about force. If they ever do that, where we have two objects, then it's often going to be our momentum, I mean, our impulse formulas. You know the one on the formula sheet that goes F net delta T equals delta P. So keep that in mind as well. Whenever we have two objects, okay, so they might talk about that, and in fact they will. Check this, impulse. So they are going to talk about impulse a little later. So, the first question, define the term momentum. So there it is. Momentum is the product of mass and velocity. You know, momentum is equal to mass times velocity. So the definition is product of mass and velocity. Next one, calculate the velocity of ball Q after the collision. So you shouldn't even look at this for more than three seconds before you understand or remember that we're going to use conservation of linear momentum. The more exam questions you practice, you just start to realize um, what formula to use where. Okay, so you just got to keep practicing exam papers. So we're going to use that one. So what many teachers do is they use the sum. By the way, that is not an E. Some students are like, oh, that's E for energy. No, it's not. It's the sum, like in series and sequences, the sigma notation. So sum of all the momentum initial before the crash equals to the sum of all the momentum after the crash. Okay, so that's the conservation of linear momentum. Choose a direction as positive. I'm going to choose to the right or east as positive. But you can definitely choose the other way. It doesn't matter. And so now what we do is we just go fill in um, the momentum of P initial plus the momentum of Q initial equals to the momentum of P final plus the momentum of Q final. Okay, so what we do is we just go fill everything in now. So the mass of P they tell us was 0 0.16, so we're going to say um, 0 0.16 its initial velocity was 10, and it is going to the right, so I'll keep that as a positive. Now, don't make this a negative just because this is going negative. No, you stick to the formula. So the mass of Q is, where did they tell us? 0 0.2, but now its velocity initial is 15 to the left, but we chose right as positive. So all I do is I just say minus 15 over there. Then we say equals. Now the mass of P is still going to be 0 0.16. Its velocity final is 5, but it's going left. So we say minus 5. Then we say plus. Now the mass of Q is still going to be 0 0.2. And its final velocity, we don't know. Don't even try to assume if it's going to be negative or positive. You always keep this variable as a positive value. Right, now I'm just going to go type all the left-hand side in on the calculator quickly. So on the left-hand side, we would end up with uh, minus 1.4. And then on the right-hand side, uh, we'll just multiply these two together quickly. We get negative 0 0.8. And then plus 0 0.2. VQ. So now we just get VQ alone, so we end up with 0 0.2 VQ equals to, uh, if we take the negative 0 0.8 over, it becomes a positive on the other side, and so that's going to give us negative 0 0.6. And then we get VQ alone by dividing by, um, by, dividing by 0 0.2. And so what we would end up with is 3 but actually a negative three. So don't panic. All that this means is that we chose east as positive. 
we're getting a negative answer. So then what you do is you just say, therefore, its velocity will be three meters per second, but then you'll just say west. Because we chose east as positive, which is to the right, but we got a negative answer, so the answer will just be west. And so there we can see three meters per second west. Next question, what is the impulse? Now, a lot of learners, I, st I see this a lot. They're like, Kevin, I can't find the formula on my formula sheet for impulse. Guys, you know that formula on the formula sheet that goes like this, F net delta T equals delta P? This part here, that is impulse. That is impulse. So how do we calculate impulse then? Do we use F net and T? Or could we also use delta P because they are equal? Ah, that's a good question. So you can actually use both. It doesn't matter. It depends on what they give you. So can you see any time over here? Do they tell us anything about time? No. Do they tell us anything about force? No. So we can't calculate impulse using these two. So we'll rather use this one, but that's okay because as we said, they are equal to each other. That's quite interesting. So they said, now it's very important, they said calculate the magnitude of the impulse on bore P. Okay, so we're going to look at bore P. Bore P. Okay, so the impulse is going to be equal to the change in the momentum, so delta P. Choose a direction as positive. I'm going to choose right as positive again. And so... I'm not going to fill in F net or T. That's what we're trying to calculate. That is the impulse. Now, delta P is given to you really nicely on the formula sheet. So here's the original formula that we're using. And then they even tell you what delta P is. Okay, so I'm going to change it to delta to that. So v, MVF minus MVI. And be careful here. We are choosing bore P. Bore P. So F net and delta T, we're not going to fill anything in because that's what we're trying to calculate. That is the impulse. Okay, so the mass of bore P. So make sure you get that right. It's bore P, so that's 0 0.16. What is bore P's final velocity? Well, that's the one that we calculate. Oh, no, bore P, Kevin. That's this one. So that's 5, but that's 5 left. But we chose right as positive. So you're going to say minus 5 over there. Then don't try to change this to a plus or a minus. Just leave it as it is in the formula. So that's a minus. Okay, and then the mass of bore P is still 0 0.16. And now what is its initial velocity? Well, that was a 10, and that was going to the right. So that one is a positive. There we go. And so now it's just a matter of typing all of this in on the calculator. And I get negative, um, I get negative 2.4. But now I don't have to give the direction. Why not, Kevin? We always give direction, bro. Um, it's because here they said magnitude magnitude. When they say magnitude, they're not interested in the direction. They just want the value. So what I'll then do is I'll just change it so that it's not negative like that. Okay. Oh, and I should give the units as Newton. Remember, impulse is Newton second. Um, so yeah, when they don't give, when they, when they just say magnitude, you don't have to give direction.